Hi. <laughs> oh, why can't I do this today? Hi, my name's Martin. <laughs> Try and be professional, come on. Right. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Martin. <laughs> Hi, I'm Martin, and welcome to Up to Great Your Day, the podcast. Oh my God. Right, forget it. I do that because that's what makes me me. And for me to express my true feelings and to the true colors of in me and how I can you know, address everything that I want to learn about. Oh dear, sorry about that intro, but I tell you what, I have just finished my interview with Millie and it's been a joy. We have laughed so much that I think it's rubbed off on me. So I'm going to keep it in there because, hey, it might make you chuckle and that's a good thing. Um, I have just done this interview with the lovely Millie who she says herself she has one extra chromosome, but that stops her doing nothing. And she is an absolute star. I've known her for a few years. We talk about that in the chat, but I'm just so pleased that I can bring her this little bit of a platform to spread awareness to the world of Down syndrome. And this is about awareness. It's about joy. It's about positivity in abundance, which is what she has. So I really hope you enjoy this chat and it brings a smile to your face. This is Millie. I am here with the lovely Millie. And I do need to read this out first of all, actually, because it says that Millie won bronze at the European Championships in Down Syndrome Synchronised Swimming, spent the mm-hmm. day with Sir Ian McKellen, performed on a West Hen stage, West, West Hen, what's that? A hen, a West Hen <laughs> stage, <laughs> performed on a West End stage, and she is passionate about giving hope and inspiration to people with Down Syndrome like herself. And I tell you what, that is already... Quite a CV, Millie. Good morning. Good morning to you, Martin. So first of yeah. all, what I do need to say, and we've got your dad here, Jeff, as well. Jeff, do you want to say a hello? Hello. That's enough from you. We're back to Millie. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Millie, it's all about you today because I think the theme for this podcast will be awareness. And that's exactly what you want to do is bring awareness to people with Down syndrome and help mm-hmm. and support, which I think is amazing. And actually your Instagram... How many people have you got on your Instagram? 16,000, so what? 16,000 people. How often do you post on Instagram? Every once a week. Every once a week? Well, that's good. I just want to um, show what some of my Instagram followers was like to um, do something that you enjoy, that you um, have fun with and play around with it. And it's always, to, it's always nice to think about of things that are really um, helpful for them to see what I've done in my life. And that means doing things that I don't normally do or do things I do normally do, like sitting up in bed having breakfast on my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and do you um, post pictures of your food like everybody else? Because I'm terrible at doing that. If I have a posh meal, I've taken that picture and I put it straight on my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really funny. <laughs> and- <laughs> What we do need to do, I think your Instagram is brilliant and everyone should go and follow it right now. Um, oh, what's the handle? What's your handle for Instagram? Out with underscore Miliana. Out with underscore Miliana. Well, we'll put it on the link as well so people will be able to click onto it. But what we do have to talk about, Sir Ian McKellen. Mm-hmm. So we probably should say, well, we're based here in Windsor and Ian came here for, well... It felt like he was here for about 12 years, didn't it? He was performing <laughs> He was performing at the Theatre Royal Windsor and mm-hmm. they did about, what was it, three months? No, about six weeks or three months of Hamlet. And then they did the Cherry Orchard. And he was here for a long time. And in that time, you managed to meet up with him and you spent a day being his Windsor tour guide. Is that right? That is correct, Martin, yes. <laughs> Did you enjoy it? Yeah, I did. It was amazing. He was really fun, really enjoyable. And I felt like he's like my grandfather figure. So <laughs> it's kind of nice to rely, rely on someone who is like world famous, um, great person and someone who's iconic. And did he enjoy spending time with you? <laughs> oh, 
Oh yeah, definitely. He enjoyed so much that we were going to have had pizza and pasta at my favorite restaurant, Insights. Oh, now the, the important question is: if you had pizza and pasta, did he pay for it? Or did he make you pay for it? Oh. <laughs> Maybe I should answer that question. <laughs> oh, did Dad when, put his hand in his pocket? When uh, when we were, because I was the photographer for this uh, little little uh, tour, mm-hmm. and uh, Ian asked Millie if she'd like to have a, a coffee or a hot chocolate when we were in in Windsor Town Center, and uh, and Millie, of course, always says yes. And anyhow, we walked in, heads are turning, and you know, <laughs> Millie goes up and orders, and Ian, Sir Ian, orders. And uh, anyhow, I reached in my pocket and he said, no, 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 I've got it. And I said, you don't need to do that. And he said, I insist. So Sir Ian says he insists. He got his way. Yes. Now, in answer to your question about uh, lunch, Uh (laughs) since I'd already seen Ian in action and known how ineffective I would be at arguing the case, Mm -hmm. uh, before we finished with lunch, I went in and uh, paid for it. And when he got up to pay for it, uh, I said, oh, Ian, I'm so sorry, but I think you're going to be very disappointed. And he said, what do you mean? And then he looked at me and said, you've already paid for it, haven't you? (laughs) I said, yes, I did. You don't always get your way. (laughs) You're too kind. You're too kind. I think you might have a few pennies in the bank, don't you? You might do, but he's earned every one. Absolutely, absolutely. Doing what he loves and earning money doing it. You can't go wrong, can you? So <laughs> let's just have a, a West End stage. So tell me a little bit about when you performed in the West End. I remember, like, going back to my um, drama school, I was in PQA. Um, we got, it basically, it stands for Pawning Quirkle Academy. PQA is... Uh... Martin, I'm sure you remember Pauline Quirk from Birds of a Feather, among you know many of her other credits. But uh, Pauline set up this uh, drama school, which is fabulous in that it uh, it helps all children, typical and atypical, uh, to you know get exposure to you know comedy and drama, uh, musical theatre, musical theatre uh, from the television. Yeah, and so this was every Saturday, and yeah. the the uh, opportunity to perform on the West End, there were a couple of, of performances. What were their names? Oh, um, Troubles of Bruin. Bruin. Oh, Lazy Ace. Lazy Ace, that's, that's right. The one. And yeah. those, are the, those are the two. And so Pauline Quirk, because of her connections, I'm sure, mm-hmm. was able to secure the uh, uh, Her Majesty's Theatre and yes. Shaftesbury Theatre yes. were I'm the two, doing... two stages you uh, performed yeah, on. Yeah, I'm not doing Romeo and Juliet. So, oh, um, nice. But but anyhow, so it's, it's just a great opportunity for kids from all over the, I believe, all over the England or maybe UK mm. to uh, to show up in London and go, you know, and perform, something... on the, perform on the West End. Yeah. And that's so, amazing yeah. that the Pauline Quirk Academy, that they support all children. Inclusion is a very popular word right now. Yes. So Millie's probably very lucky to, uh, mm. to be swept up in this... Uh, tsunami of interest yes yeah. I, I, I watch your friend would you call yourself now listen would you call yourself a singer an actress dancer or are you a triple threat oh good question <laughs> well my dad always says um so does my mom uh, well, listen, I try and sing and I'm not a good singer either, sweetheart, but I've built a 20 year career on it. So why not? Hey, I'm sure you can. So are yeah, you... <laughs> it's a bit of a too. <laughs> uh, do I have to a dancer? No, I don't. But um, sometimes, not like all the time, but sometimes I gain a mood of dancing with music and it's a set of something that is really positive. I don't do it, but like, I do it for fun. Yeah. Sometimes, not all the time. What's your favourite music to dance to? Do you dance around your bedroom, the kitchen, the living room? Do you annoy your mum and dad? I don't annoy my mum. I don't annoy my parents. One another thing is that I don't do the kitchen. Mm. I do the bedroom on my own. And uh, I don't have a favourite music. 
my dad, I know he's going to say, he's going to say, he's going to say anyway, I don't pick favourites. Ah, well done. Well, listen, what you need to do is discover the 90s dance music because I think that is my favourite thing to dance to. And I'm old school. I'm like Stock Aiken and Waterman, a bit of Mel and Kim. Have you heard of Mel and Kim? A bit of early Kylie? No. No. <laughs> I feel oh, so I'm old, dead. Jeff. I feel so old. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jeff, uh, just, just out of curiosity, what's your favourite kind of music? Oh my gosh! I, like Millie, I, I probably don't like to pick favorites, but but my my best memories probably date back to the seventies. So a little bit of Billy Joel, maybe a little Rod Stewart, Queen, uh, oh, Queen, Queen, Eagles, yeah. yes, Boston Journey, Kansas. Uh, how's that? Wow! So no, no, Mella Kim or or early Kylie, they're not for you. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, you're sufficiently younger than me that uh, when you're when the music like that was playing, I was busy building a career. I didn't have time to around listening to the radio. Listen, you get that you get that Sunita and Sonia on your Spotify. You won't regret it. Uh, well, <laughs> what we need to do is also talk about which I mentioned at the beginning. Um, you won bronze at the European Championships. Yeah. Dan Syndrome yeah. synchronized swimming. I didn't actually know you did synchronized swimming, and I've known you now for what three years, four years, I think. Mm, yeah, it's uh, amazing. Um, we really was there though. It's like it's like a privilege, you know. It's it's amazing what uh, people with Down Syndrome can do in terms of their capabilities and ability to do something that is so wonderful and just amazing and I just loved it it was amazing and uh, I had a lot of fun in the pool with a song called Mamma Mia because Mamma Mia is an Abba song and I love the Abba songs it was lovely with your swimming to to practice it to learn the routine and just to be um so familiar with routine the music and I think dance with music is perfect you know like yeah like you say back on on the dancing thing you say I do that because that's what makes me me and for me to express my true feelings and sort of true colors of in me and how I can you know address everything that I could learn about yeah it's that's just so amazing Millie that's brilliant however dancing with music, I'm all in for that. But you were doing synchronized swimming, holding your breath underwater. That's a whole new level of dancing to music. Come on. <laughs> How long can you hold your breath for? Oh, well, it's going back to Turkey when I was a little girl. And uh, one of my um, parents that taught me, How long can you be in the water? And that's your question. I know it tells something. Do you have any idea? Um, <laughs> no, no, I don't understand. <laughs> go on then until I want to come up until what, about, 10, about, 11? About 45 seconds is yeah. probably your limit. Probably. Oh my no, gosh. Long. I can't even do five seconds and I'm, I'm, I've am i got, you know, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. So that's pretty amazing. And are you still doing your synchronized swimming or is that pushed to oh, one side uh, now? Yeah, I'm still doing it. I am still doing it. That's amazing. Well, I tell you what, I've also got on my little notes here that your dad's given me. Um, actually, Jeff, I should say, what part of the States are you from? Just curious. Have you ever seen The Wizard of Oz? <sighs> About 500 times, yeah. There you go. That's where I'm from. What, from I Oz? So thankful. You're, from Oz. You don't, you're not wearing a green outfit, Jeff. <laughs> I've got the red shoes to prove it. Uh, now, Kansas, right in the middle. Are you from Kansas? Ah, yeah. Interesting. Have you still got a lot of family there, even though you're over here in the UK? I do have family that's still there. I have family spread, you know, kind of all over the United States. Um, and I also, uh, my daughter moved to uh, England well, probably about 10, 10 plus years ago. And my son is currently stationed in Naples, Italy as a JAG officer. I have a very big family and I'm a baby in the family. How funny is that? You are the baby in the family. I tell you. Well, I say I'm spoiled. <laughs> I'm Although, hang on though, 
you're, I think your dog's younger than you, though. You, there's one younger than you. Just. <laughs> Just. Just. I think um, I should also mention that uh, Jeff has been educating me this week, seeing as a few weeks ago I said the word plethora, to which <laughs> to which Jeff said, in America, we call it plethora. <laughs> To, which I think is the right pronunciation. Mine sounds more like a body part, plethora. I've said it for years. It's ridiculous. I can't believe it. Martin, you're in good company. Just after after that little, uh, that fun little encounter we had over plethora or plethora, <laughs> uh, I was watching a YouTube video with a uh, quite a prominent scientist, and uh, and he said plethora. A scientist. So, uh, a scientist. Oh so, wow. Well. Yeah, you know, Webster. Who, who follows Webster anymore anyway? Eh? So actually, maybe I'm really correct. Like the proper pronunciation that scientists use is plethora and everyone else has just picked up on this plethora. So maybe I'm actually, you know, up there with the scientists. I, I learn something new every day. I didn't even realize you were a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been called worse, Jeff. I've been called worse. <laughs> well, listen, thank you so much. You are smashing stereotypes about Down syndrome and I love you for it. And oh. the fact that you're giving hope and inspiration to people all over the world with Down syndrome and everyone that supports you and everyone else, I think you're absolutely cracking. And you keep spreading awareness and doing what you do because... I think you're a diamond. <laughs> oh, thank you. you. You too, Martin. You too. I have loved chatting to you. Fortunately, you got your dad there as well, but there you go. That's what oh, that's it's right. I didn't my dad. <laughs> <laughs> He's like a, my pal, my, I think they're my best friend. Oh. Don't think oh. I'll do that again. Or oh, even my mom. <laughs> no, exactly. They should be your best friends. Yeah. I'm glad you got your mum in there at the end. <laughs> yeah, it's probably, it's not in the room, but yeah. We it can edit good. it to make it sound like you mentioned it's, her first. We we have we have very much a uh, uh, a division of duty so far as parenting is concerned. I take care of um, you know a lot of the kind of acting acting side and maybe the academic side, and Nikki is a specialist in fashion and makeup and just having fun. So Nikki's the one that makes sure that Millie completely understands how to have fun in life. And uh, and I think that her Instagram page- I think that's why you might- that's, that's probably the, the, the underpinning of your objective on your Instagram page mm -hmm. is to show how much fun somebody with an extra chromosome can get up to. Yeah. And that's all down to Nikki. That's right. Oh, we, love, we love your mum. She's amazing. And yeah. she's a very and she's a very good dog looking after, isn't she? <laughs> oh yeah. He said, I don't know my baby the panto. Um, what was it? Uh big shout out to Nikki Jeff and Billy. Uh, you said something about what was it? Jellyfish. Jellyfish and jellyfish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you talk about weather spirits? Yep. So I just say to people that might not know, so I do pantomime at the Theatre of Windsor. I've been the comic there for 12 years. And you guys come in every year and you look after our dogs sometimes when we're busy working and so on and so on. And um, yeah, I had to do a shout out from our dogs to you because you were in the audience. So you had to get a shout yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. What are you up to today? Anything exciting? Anything going on? Are you just chilling at home? So today um, is the day I go to a long walk to do this uh, Korean Platinum Jubilee. And also I'm in the choir. You're going to have a lot of Bum. Millie, it's been lovely talking to you today. Lovely <laughs> talking to you, Jeff. I think I'm seeing you tomorrow, um, although you might still be in bed because we're coming around very early. Um, oh but if we don't see you, thank you so much. Thank you for talking today. And we'll put all your details on the link as well so people can follow it on the link and everything, all right? Martin, what I was going to say is really you're amazing and thank you so much for uh, inviting Millie onto your amazing podcast. Yeah, thank you. It's all about mindfulness, and raising awareness. And happiness and joy and hope and do something that is so incredible. And you are the, what, cherry on cake? You're doing oh. something that's so amazing. 
and just want to say thank you. We both want to say thank you and it means a world. You are more than welcome. And I love that we can give you a platform. You were, I mean, you were my first choice when I decided to do these podcasts. Well, not my first choice, second choice, because Kylie was the first, but she hasn't got back to me. But you were my oh. <laughs> <laughs> You were definitely at the top of my bit of scrap paper when I came up with the idea. So, oh. sweetheart, it's lovely. And I think people will enjoy listening to this. So have a lovely day and I will speak to you soon. Enjoy singing for the Queen. Thank you so Yay. much. So that was Millie, and I tell you what, she is an absolute joy. I just love what she's doing right now, and she's doing it very well. You can follow Millie on her Instagram. It's out with underscore Millianna, out with O U T W I T H underscore Millie, M I L L I E A N N A. Um, follow her on there. She's just brilliant. And do you know what? I absolutely love what she just said which is so important that this p- podcast, p- podcast, this podcast and uh, everything with it, everything with the website, everything to do with that grade your day is about putting out positivity, putting out good energy, lots of light, lots of colour, lots of fun and joy, but also being aware of the negatives and how we deal with them. But it's about putting the cherry on the top. She said it brilliantly. It really is. It's about having a lovely cake, being happy with our cake, but just finding that little extra to put a cherry on the top, whatever that may be. Um, I love her. She's amazing. Check her out on Instagram. Thank you, Millie, for being here today. And if you've enjoyed this podcast, please feel free to subscribe, follow, whatever you do. And if you wish to leave us some lovely stars and a review, I'd really appreciate it. Also, you can email me if you've got any comments about the episode or anything we'd like to say. Send a message to Martin, M-A-R-T-I-N, at, oh, hang on, what is it? Oh, upgradeyourday.co.uk. It's been a right one today, honestly. So that's Martin at upgradeyourday.co.uk. So you can send a message there. And if there's anybody that you think I should chat to, recommend them. Send me a message. Get in touch. But whatever you're doing today, have a lovely day. Go and spread some joy.